I'm telling you, up until that moment, that thought hadn't, hadn't occurred to me at all. I can help you with the business stuff. Right. I can help you with that. But you got to make money in order for me to work for you. Right. Right. So you got to keep doing what you're doing already. You, that has to keep happening. So keep doing that. And as time goes on, I'll teach you about how this, how this works, you know. This is Small Business Celebration. Welcome, where we're celebrating small businesses for big breakthroughs. Welcome to Small Business Celebration, and our guest this week is Jeff Gutierrez, the owner of DeWalt Corporation. Welcome to Small Business Celebration. Thank you. And for visionaries who don't know who you are, who are you and what is it that you do? I'm Jeff Gutierrez. I am a lifelong Kern County resident. I own DeWalt Corporation. We are a civil engineering and land surveying company at our core, but we also do 3D laser scanning and modeling and have also taken up subsurface utility management. Now, Eagle Ear Visioneers may recognize we have had Jeff on the show before, but this was way back when it was just a podcast, not even YouTube. And Jeff is, is not the founder of DeWalt Corporation. How did you get your start in business? I uh, started working for Dennis DeWalt. Okay. I worked for Dennis for 20 years. Right. And I think that Dennis saw something in me mm -hmm. that I didn't even see in myself. Wow. In time when Dennis had kind of transitioned from being an engineer to being a land developer, mm. and uh, me and a, another person who worked here, we had kind of taken up uh, the reins here, N not officially, right? but in practice every day. We were, I was running the survey department, and um, Kath McWhorter was her name at that time. She ran the engineering department. Um, Dennis came to us and said, you know, you two should buy this thing from me because, you know, I'm you're doing it all. You right. guys are running this yeah. thing. And uh, up in, I'm telling you, up until that moment, that thought had, hadn't occurred to me at all. Not can, even I, a whiff. Not even a whiff. I It, it took me so off guard. I thought, <laughs> sure. so naively, right. I thought, well, I'm just going to always work for Dennis. Dennis will never get old and right. move on. I'll just, right. he's, he treats me really well and right. I really like it. I'll just keep working for Dennis forever, right? Right. Not ever stopping to think that Dennis would want to move on. And yeah, so. Did you buy the business completely or did you and she also buy the business? Dennis was really wise okay. about how he um, initiated this transition. Uh -huh. He hired a company that uh, was going to evaluate the value of the company, and right. he wanted to do that all in front of us right. so we would all meet together. He, he wanted to be very transparent about that. Mm -hmm. But one of the other things that they did was they impressed upon both Kath and I the difference between ownership and compensation, mm. and we, we both probably learned a lot there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once the value had been established and we were getting ready to start signing contracts, Dennis told both of us, um, you shouldn't go forward with this based on my conversation with you. You both need counsel. Mm. You both need to get legal counsel. Nice. I went and got a guy and she went and got a guy. And um, my guy, his advice to me was... Um, Run! <laughs> <laughs> no, he said... Hey, you need to sign this agreement as fast as you can before mm -hmm. he changes his mind. And uh, her counsel had some caveats, mm -hmm. you know, that some things that they wanted to do a little different in the uh, agreement. And so when we got back together, um, she asked, you know, hey, these are the things that I need to change. Dennis said, no, I'm, you know, my toys. This is this is the agreement. You can sign it or not sign it. And I did, and she didn't. Since you took over the business. The business has changed a lot because back in those days, DeWalt was primarily into residential engineering, was it not? Yeah, I, I think before I came to work at, at DeWalt, mm -hmm. uh, Dennis did some work for a lot of ag interests around okay. town. Right. But inevitably, when I think when Bakersfield started to grow, you know, there was, I'll, I, you know, in, at least in my mind, I think one of the very important points in Bakersfield history was when Cal State Bakersfield got located where it's at now right. versus in East Bakersfield 
on George Nichols' property. Those okay. were the two sites that were being considered. Right, right. And had Cal State been put in East Bakersfield, it would have changed the whole way that our community grew up. Really? But but when it got placed there, uh, Tenneco, then Castle and Cook, right. really started to develop, and, and, and Bakersfield started to develop. Right. And so, yes, Dennis made that transition into residential, as did, I think, a lot of people. There, there was a void, and yeah, people had to fill the void. But since the, you've taken over, you've evolved and changed, too. You know, we're like, we're like 25, 30 employees now, right. and, uh, but we are probably more diverse mm. than we were when Dennis was here. How so? Having been through a couple of residential development cycles, mm -hmm. I could see that you know, some of my competitors suffered when uh, residential development wasn't going because they kind of had all their eggs in mm. that basket. Mm -hmm. I made up my mind that I wanted to be in more than one industry. So, you know, we, we still do residential development and commercial development and industrial development, but we never stopped embracing oil industry that's in Western Kern. We, we've had master services agreements with Air Energy and Chevron and, uh, and other smaller oil companies. We do a significant amount of work for uh, two large utilities for Southern California Gas and Southern California Edison. What are some of the services that you guys offer to in civil engineering? In my uh, talking to people about what I do, right? Right, sure. I, I tell them that I think what all of our clients have in common is that they have a piece of land. Sure. Right? Right. And somehow or another, they want to leverage that land uh, for some kind of profit or or, or, or use, right? right? Sometimes a guy is going to buy a piece of land because he wants to. He's a home builder and he wants to put houses on the land. Right. And sometimes he's commercial developer and he wants to put great big uh, stores and parking lots on the land. Right. Sometimes he an oil field guy and he wants to drill holes uh, where he knows that there's oil under the ground. So the services we're giving them all revolve around this need that they have to uh, make sure they're. Either their asset is protected or in the right place. You know, the same thing for a residential developer. He wants to make sure that he's not building something on his neighbor's property. Right. And that all of that infrastructure that he has to install in there, mm -hmm. that it works and is in the right place and serves his future homes well. That the water is the size the right way. That the sewer is sized the right way that all the gas, uh, electrical, and, and phone lines that are put in place in the correct position that is, you know, kind of dictated by either local agencies or those utilities. In the next segment, we're going to be talking about something that I have been getting questions on, not only through our social media DMs, but actually in person from several visioneers, which is the topic of succession. And we're going to be talking about the very thing that Jeff was talking about earlier on how he got to own this company and how he's moving forward with the next generation. But before we do that, Jeff, if visioners want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? Well, it's, uh, it's easy. You know, we've been in the same place for, uh, gosh, uh, going on 25 years. So we're right downtown Bakersfield at 1930 22nd Street. Mm -hmm. You can call us. Our phone number is 661-323-4600. It has been, I think, as long as I've been here. <laughs> sure. Since 1981? Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, we have a website, www.dewaltcorp.com. Okay. All one word. And how do you spell DeWalt? D-E-W-A-L-T-C-O-R-P, dewaltcorp.com. Yeah, if somebody wanted to email me... Um, my email ad, uh, address is really simple. It's my initials, J-A-G at dewaltcorp.com. And if you like Small Business Celebration, go ahead and like, subscribe, and notify. And when we come back, we're going to talk about succession planning from the guy who did it and is doing it when we go right back. The winter season is rapidly approaching, but are the tires on your car or truck ready for wet weather? Bakersfield's best tire store, Clareau Tire, has been serving families like yours for 80 years and installs and services the tires your family depends on when the wet weather comes. Give Clareau Tire a call at 661-324-6069 and ask them about what tire works best for you and your budget. Call Clareau Tire at 661-324-6069 or visit them at 530 East 21st Street in Bakersfield or at ClareauTire.com today. The wet winter weather is rapidly approaching. 
call Clarou Tire at 661-324-6069 today. I'm here with Jeff Gutierrez, the owner of DeWall Corporation, and our visionary question comes from Bree who asks, I'm looking at succession planning and I have a pair of employees that may make good future owners of my business. Did you buy the business from its founder and why did that founder choose you to own the business? That's a, that's a, a great question. Yes, I did buy the company from the founder, Dennis right. DeWalt. Right. Why did Dennis choose me? Like I said earlier, um, I naively thought that I would always work for Dennis. Right. And had never even, the thought of me owning the company had never crossed my mind until the moment that he came to me and said, you know, you should buy this from me. Right. But Hopefully, what he saw in me was um, some diligence, you know. I think I was a hard worker. I really identified with my work. Mm. Um, I'm a land surveyor. I'm a licensed land surveyor, and that's right. what I did for Dennis. Right. One of the things that uh, you become, I guess, kind of good at as a land surveyor is that every time you go out to a new project, they're always different. Mm -hmm. No two pieces of land are the same, right? So right. you're always going to a different project. It's a little bit like a puzzle. You kind of have to take a look around and figure out, how am I going to solve this puzzle? How yeah. am I going to get my surveying done in an efficient way, but also a way that satisfies all the rules and regulations of what you know what you're doing. Right. Um, I I kind of enjoyed going out and doing that every day. So um, maybe maybe Dennis recognized, hey, he likes what he does. He works hard at it. Um, if he works hard at that, maybe he'll work hard at running this business. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. Maybe it was something to do with also the other intrinsic value of your innate love for going out on the property, seeing it as a puzzle, but it's new every day and you welcome the challenge of trying to figure out how to solve something that you have no control over. Because that's one of the attributes of a business owner, is it not? Yeah, you, you, you bring up a good point. I hadn't thought of it like that before. But yes, there are challenges that come along that you couldn't have seen uh, a month ago. and A day before. Or a day before. <laughs> sure. And so, um, yeah, that that's a that's a great point. There are challenges that come up, and it is like a big puzzle, and uh, every day got to try and uh, figure out the puzzle. But being an employee and being the owner are two very different things. Yeah. And when you signed the contract and you became the owner of the company, you had to change. Yeah. I um I realized pretty quickly that I'm maybe I know how to survey. Mm -hmm. Maybe I know a little bit about civil engineering, but I really didn't know any I had no business acumen. Mm. I didn't know anything about how to run a business. How did you fix that? Well, the the first fix right. was a gift. Dennis had always worked with an accounting firm in Bakersfield, mm -hmm. a very well-known accounting firm here, and um, they're still Which active. One? I think I better not say. Okay. Okay, because when I started working with them, I I didn't feel like I was a priority for them. Got it. Okay. Right. And uh, and they they had big clients, and so it, you know it wasn't like I was upset about that, right. but I just I needed somebody to pay attention to me. Sure. So I talked to a few people, and uh, I got introduced to a guy named Tim Hubble. Okay. And Tim became my accountant. It, it it was the best move that I made as that young taking over business owner, mm. because I think some of the best advice I've ever gotten was from Tim. Tim told me, "Hey, listen." I can help you with the business stuff. Right. I can help you with that. But you got to make money in order for me to work for you. Right. Right? So you got to keep doing what you're doing already. You that has to keep happening. So keep doing that. And as time goes on, I'll teach you about how this how this works, you know. And uh he's been true to his word. He's still my accountant. Um yeah, he's 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 been great for me. Now, as you're moving forward, now you're getting into that position that Mr. DeWalt was in. Have you started looking for qualities within the company of employees that think outside the box, that are willing to be 
the land su surveyor that goes out and s solves the daily puzzle and 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 tries to figure things out on the fly and that might be good candidates yes um you know there's been a few employees that have shown interest hmm. and when you sit down and and kind of go over what that would look like right. the, the actual process of it um some of them have have changed their mind sure and i think wisely so business ownership isn't for everyone i I think it goes back to what we learned um, from uh, that uh, appraisal company, you know, that ownership and compensation, they are two completely different things. Right. And when you look at all of the things that Jeff Gutierrez guarantees mm -hmm. for the company, guys look at that and go, wow, that, that might not be for me. How have you changed? Since you became the employee, and the next day you were the owner, I, you know, I, you know, that happens so incrementally that it's hard to know like a moment or anything. Mm -hmm. But I think certainly over time you start to feel the weight of having employees. I think it's a little bit like having children. You know, you when you're a father, you know, you, you have to have some success so you can care for your family. Right, right. It's the most important thing to you. Um, and then you have employees and you start to feel the same way. I'm with my employees more hours than I'm with my family every day. Right. And so, yeah, we, of course, we have to care for each other. And, you know, you start to feel that responsibility that I need to keep this thing going because, you know, they've got family and mortgages and car payments and things. And so, yeah, I got to, I got to keep them busy. So, Yeah. I think there's that responsibility that has changed me and and then kind of a community responsibility as well. I'm not mm -hmm. so sure that um, Jeff Gutierrez, the employee who surveyed every day, would have ever been a Rotarian or a board member for the Current Community Foundation or a board member for Calm. Um, those are... Um, organizations that r really serve the community right. and they need help. And so I've gotten involved in them, I guess, out of a responsibility to the community that makes um, DeWalt Corporation uh, what it is, right? Right. Yeah. When we come back, we're going to talk about something that Jeff just alluded to, which is the community. And if you get involved with the community, more specifically the Rotary or Kiwanis or any of the other service groups, and they ask you to be president, how do you leave your mark on the organization for a lifetime? Can we come right back. The reason we're talking with Jeff Gutierrez is because of a visionary question that came from a visionary just like you. We had a visionary that wanted to find out yeah, what qualities in finding my successor in my own business do I need to look for or should be looking for right now? So if you've got a question, you've got thoughts, something you'd like to learn about here on Small Business Celebration, reach out to us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. And who knows, your question could appear here on Small Business Celebration. So reach out to us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram today. I'm here with Jeff Gutierrez, the owner of DeWall Corporation, and our visionary question comes from Dave who asks, it's one thing to be part of a service organization, but it's something else to serve as its president. I don't want to be like every other past president and want to leave my mark. What have you done and what can you recommend? First of all, you belong to what service, service organization? I, I'm a Rotarian. You're a Rotarian, so, I, so I, we'll start with that. Downtown Bakersfield. Right, and why did you join that organization in the first place? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest here. Sure. I don't think, that, you know, I've been in the club for a while. Right. I'm pretty confident that at that time I got into the club because of the other guys who were in there. Okay. I, I wanted access to them. Sure, sure, business contacts, and that's perfectly natural. Yeah, it's the complete wrong reason to be in Rotary. <laughs> <All> right, sir. <laughs> because the reason to be in Rotary is? To serve. To, and what kind of service? Um, back to the community. I think the guy who started Rotary, um, he was a businessman. I think he was in Pittsburgh or somewhere in Pennsylvania. Right. Um, but he recognized at some point 
the reason I have my lifestyle, right. the reason my business is successful is because these people that are around me right. come and, get, and buy my services. Right. And so I got to give back to the community. I need to give back to the community. And you know what started with this one guy is now what it's international, right? Yeah, and, and the same thing has been true with you, because you got in the club to be around the guys. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I did, I really did. That's full confession. I did, but right. having been in there as long as I've been in there and seen not just what our Rotary does, right. but what other Rotaries around Bakersfield do, mm-hmm. do what Rotary International does. Um, it it turns you into a philanthropist. Sure, it right, really does. Right, right. Yeah. So you're the incoming president. I'm president elect 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 elect. Okay, so, so you uh, still have a couple of years to go. Yes, Joe Hayes, our cur- current president. Okay. Kristen Watson will be our president in 2024. Right. And in 2025, Jeff Gutierrez will be the president. And what are you planning on doing on making your mark? Yeah, that's a great question and something that I lose sleep over, right? Because um, I definitely, I, I really enjoy the people in Rotary. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're a great group of people mm-hmm. um, who, I don't know, kind of, they, they, they're, serv- they, they're service oriented. They want to serve their community, but they do it so kind of effortlessly and with a little bit of fun. Right. Do you know what I mean? Sure. And so... Yeah, I really enjoy being around them. So I want, you know, to to serve them during my presidency. And I think that that's what my focus is going to be. What what are the things that I can do that they either need to hear or haven't heard before or maybe need to be reminded of or right. whatever. But uh, so, yeah, so I'm going to have for my my year, my programs, because right. that's what we do every Thursday. We have a program. Right. I want to put them into some categories so that they can... I'm going to try and think of some categories that they'll benefit from. So sure. one of them yeah. is going to be small business because the majority of them right. are small business. Sure. So sure. I want to have one of those program categories be all about small business and what are the trends and what do you need to know and who can we bring in here to talk about small business. And When you're not here at the office or out having fun surveying land, what do you like to do for fun? Well, um, I am an avid cyclist. Okay. Yeah, and have been for a number of years. Um, I, uh, if I'm not, if I, if I have time to do something fun, I'm probably on a bike. I, I think I have more bikes, right, than a, a human being should really be allowed to have. But okay, so a selfish plug. What kind of a bike are you riding right now? I have a, I have a few bikes. My favorite bike right oh. now is my gravel bike. Okay. It's just a, a very simple bike. It has no suspension on it. Mm-hmm. It has a little bit of, of a fatter tire than my road bike, mm-hmm. but it's just it's just a simple thing to get on and have some fun on. I can take it on a dirt road, right. or I can ride it on pavement. Yeah, so I'm really enjoying my gravel bike right now. Aluminum, not not carbon fiber. Steel. No. Ooh, I'm, I'm old Ooh, school. Wow. I do enjoy my road bike is a steel bike. My gravel bike is a steel bike. My tandem is a steel bike. Um, my mountain bike is carbon. Sure. Yeah. Oh, well, you, you get you know, you, you have to go modern technologies at some <laughs> point, right? <laughs> what have you learned from riding your bike that you apply to your business? I have, I have a buddy. His name is Jeff Afonso, and he and I have we've ridden all over California together. Right. He was the guy who would have this crazy idea. Let's go do a century ride in Santa Rosa, you know? And, and a century I, ride is? 100 miles. Okay. 100 miles. And I was just that guy that was just, you know, dumb enough to say, okay, sure, why whatever not? you say, let's go do it, you know? We've done centuries. We've done double centuries. We've, do, we've done a lot of riding together. And Jeff and I aren't, like, definitely not the fastest guys on a bike. Right. And we're probably not the best bike handlers. But what we are, we're grinders. Mm. And that's probably the thing that maybe my personality either led me to cycling and maybe that's why I've had a little bit of success is that, you know, as hard as it ever gets, we just keep gritting our teeth and keep going. And, you know, st- steep climb, down hit, what we just are going to make our way through it. So, What makes you wake up every morning and open your business? Well... 
I'll start off by saying, uh, you know, that I learned something from Dennis DeWalt. Okay. He told me, you know, I, I can never really completely retire because I, I don't want, he was a golfer. Okay. Lifelong golfer. Good golfer. Right. Really good golfer. But he said, I don't want golf to be my job. Mm. I want that to be my fun thing. So I'm right. always going to be doing something else that's kind of really more my job right. so that I can enjoy my my golf. Right. And I, I, I've always thought that's that's kind of you know good advice. I don't think I want to have to wake up every day and ride my bike. I want to do it because I want to do it. Right. Having said that, I I am really blessed with uh, some really good people here, and I have to I have to mention them. Okay. Right. So Todd Wood is the director of my engineering department. We grew up on a street together when we were little kids in East Bakersfield. We mm. grew up on Arnold Street. I've known him forever. He was 17 years at Kern County in the roads department. And um, he's a great communicator as well as an engineer. I've got Adam Stubbs over here, who's my director of my surveying department. Pours his heart and soul into his work every single day. And uh, my bookkeeper, uh, Dina Jacques, uh, she's our, she's like our mother hen here. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Sure. Like she's got her finger on the pulse of how everybody's doing. And, you know, when, when somebody has a family thing going on that we need to be aware of, you know, she's the one that makes sure, uh, you know, that uh, when we need, when we need a company outing, right. Dina comes to me and says, you know, I think we should go to a hockey game. Yes, we should. should right. You know? yeah. How can, yeah. How can I stay? How do I stay away from all of that? Right. You know what I mean? I, I really enjoy coming and working together with them. And I hope I've done a good job of, you know, conveying to them that we can figure things out together. You know what I mean? This isn't Jeff walking in and looking over your shoulder and going, hey, do that this way. Right. I want, you know, I, I think there's a lot I can learn from you guys. Sure. So let's let's do this together. That, that's worth waking up and coming to work for. What do you say to the business owner who's having a difficult day? Be a grinder. Okay. Yeah, be a grinder. Grind it out. Um, it won't be like that forever. You know, if, if, when you when you grind it out, you'll get you'll get to that other side. Um, keep your head up, so that you see what's going on around you. You know, don't don't grind with your head down because, you know, you might miss something. But um, yeah, just keep grinding and keep your head up, Jeff. This has been a real privilege. Thank you for joining us here on Small Business Celebration. It's It's been great fun. Uh, I, I really enjoy it. I, I think I've learned something about myself sitting here. <laughs> and if visioners want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? They can go to DeWalt Corporation's website, www.dewaltcorp.com. They can call us at uh, 661-323-4600. Or they can email me at jag at DeWaltCorp.com. Judge Advocate General at DeWalt. <laughs> no? <laughs> no? <laughs> oh, there's a story coming. <laughs> anyway, and I'll be right back with my final thought. The winter season is rapidly approaching, but are the tires on your car or truck ready for wet weather? Bakersfield's best tire store, Clareau Tire, has been serving families like yours for 80 years and installs and services the tires your family depends on when the wet weather comes. Give Clareau Tire a call at 661-324-6069 and ask them about what tire works best for you and your budget. Call Clareau Tire at 661-324-6069 or visit them at 530 East 21st Street in Bakersfield or at ClareauTire.com today. The wet winter weather is rapidly approaching. Call Clareau Tire at 661-324-6069 today. With clarity. As many of you visioneers know, I like to get up in the morning and go for my customary morning bike ride. And the reason I do that is because it allows me to clear out the cobwebs and allows me to think and plan the morning, the day, and the future. And this one particular morning, it was kind of overcast when I went out for my ride, so much so that it kind of blocked out the moon. Yeah, I, I do get up that early in the morning. But as I was pedaling along, I was also getting a headwind. To make matters worse, that headwind was sporadic. It would come, it would go, it would have different intensities and different strengths, and sometimes it was strong enough to darn near push me off the road. 
But I kept going because I've taken this road a thousand times. I know exactly where I'm going. And even though I've taken this road a thousand times, and even though I've had my headlamp on and my LEDs on, I was kind of like an island unto myself. But even with that, there were times because of the darkness and because of being pushed around with the wind, there were times where I wasn't exactly sure where on the road I was. But yet, I just kept pedaling forward anyway. And sure enough, the sun began to dawn and the road before me began to become illuminated by the morning sun. Now, many visioneers, we're going through some tumultuous times right now. We've got a lot of headwinds ourselves, whether it's personally or professionally or politically or what have you. And there are times when we're not sure where we are on the road. But what makes us different, what makes you and I different, is even with those headwinds, we know where we're going. We have vision. vision. We, we know where the road is supposed to take us. And we know how to make the adjustments. We know what we've got to do to get there. And we know that even with all the different headwinds that may come our way with different strengths and different ways of trying to push us around, we still know where we're going. Why? Because we are pioneers with vision. I hope you enjoyed our conversation this week with Jeff Gutierrez, the owner of DeWalt Corporation, and I hope you learned something that you can use today to grow a strong and profitable business. And we'll see you here again next week when we celebrate another small business making a big breakthrough. What kind of a bird likes a construction site. I don't know. What kind of bird likes a construction site? A crane! A crane. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dad jokes. Dad jokes, you got it. Um, what do you call the child of, an of a civil engineer? What do you call the child of a civil engineer? A trust fund. Baby. Like it. But um bum Yeah, rough stuff, rough stuff. Di we we are hard hitting news here. <clears throat> Shall we get started? Sure. Okay. Welcome to Small Business Celebration and our